What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today I'm going to show you how you can create this painting design with a lovely canvas texture and a lot of freedom with the painting aesthetic. Now, of course, there's links to everything you're going to need for today's tutorial over on my Patreon. It's completely free for you to go and grab all the requirements for today's design, any brushes that I've used, the palette, canvas size, etc. You can grab all of those free requirements again over on my Patreon. I'll leave a link to the post in the description down below. With this particular design, I want you to have some fun with it. We've got that painting aesthetic and we just want to keep it nice and loose. Nothing too hyper detailed in a way. We just want to keep it nice and simple and just have some fun with it. Now, as always, make sure to tag me in finished creations over on Instagram when you're done. And also come and join my Discord. It's completely free to join and there's lots of users sharing their work in the community. As always, make sure to subscribe for weekly Procreate tutorials. But if you want even more tutorials from me, you can come and join me over on Patreon, where I've been posting three exclusive tutorials every single month to my patrons. And the catalogue sits at nearly 100 at the time of recording. So make sure to check that out using the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, we're going to need to go ahead and add in a few different guides. Now, of course, you'll be able to see my stencil guide on the screen, which I've added here as a new layer. So all you need to do for that is if you go up to your actions and go to the option of add, insert the photo of the guide. If you've saved it to your files, insert it from your files. It doesn't really matter. And as long as you've got it as a transparent PNG, you're good to go. You'll also see I've got a bit of a grid system going on. So if we go up to our actions again and we go to the canvas tab this time, turn on drawing guide here and edit that drawing guide to whatever is a quarter of your canvas. Of course, I'm using 2000 by 2000, so you'll need to set your grid size to 500. Should just help us just with a few other little bits and bobs of sort of scale and where you can lay things out. So hitting done, we've got everything we need to get started. We're gonna go ahead and go up to our layers. We're gonna to go to our background color. We're gonna change it to the color in the very bottom right of the palette. Hit done. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna drag it underneath our guide. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here. It's the bottom of the third column from the right. We're going to go ahead and go to our selection tool. We're going to use the option of rectangle and we're going to make sure color fill is turned on. So it's nice and blue like this. And you're going to want to go ahead and draw in your sort of ocean area. And that's going to run roughly here. You take a look at my grid positioning wise against where I've drawn my rectangle so you can match up accordingly to your own. So something roughly there looks pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and block in a lot of our shapes and we're going to start at the very front, block that in and I'm actually going to complete the foreground before we move on. So that'll be nicely done ahead of time. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create two new layers, sort of left to right on both and group them together and we'll rename this group and we'll call it foreground. Like so. We'll go to the bottom layer out of the two and we'll go to our colours. We'll grab this colour here in the top left of the palette. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go ahead and go into the option of organic and wild grass. Now, the only thing I have, I think it's the orientation of my iPad. If I tap on here, the only thing I've done with my wild grass, which I've shown in a previous one, if you go to the shape tab and you go to the shape source, you can see I've just rotated it to its right hand side here. That way, when I hit done and hit done again, the blades of the grass are upright for me. So if they're already upright for you, you do not need to change this. Now we're going to go ahead and just set the brush size to 5% maximum opacity. And if you take a look at our little guide here, we've got this diagonal line that runs across the bottom row side to side. We're just going to go ahead and start at the top here. Good solid amount of pressure if you can, a bit kind of upright and just draw in some grass and then block it in at the bottom. So just creating this kind of effect here, a big block of grass. It's going to nicely sort of frame our design as well. It's going to help us keep a lot of this sort of land here just fade out in behind there. It's like a little barrier. So if we go ahead then and we go up to the layer above, we're going to tap on it and clipping mask it to the grass. We're going to go to our colors and grab the middle color here in the first column. And your brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. We're going to go ahead and go back to the layer. We're going to tap on its blend mode and change it from normal to the option of overlay. And we're going to go ahead and use the brush probably around about 5% brush size will be good. Just want you to kind of dance your pen in here and create some sort of brownie patches and just add in some variation to the color. Very, very simple and not a lot to it, to be honest. Just a little variation on the color. And then we're also going to go ahead and create another new layer. Tap on it and we're going to clipping mask it and change the blend mode on this from normal to the option of color dodge. If we go to our colors and we grab the one in the very bottom left of the palette. We just want to go ahead and probably make our brush size a little bit bigger, maybe about 8% now. And just towards the top edge of these blades of grass, you want to kind of dance your pen along here 
and create some lovely brighter patches on top of the grass here. And you should be able to then have a little bit of a blend between some of your browner patches and this bright tone here. And I just want to triple check that pretty much all the blades at the very sort of top edge of them are nice and bright. So zooming out, you should have then a nice little sort of green spot over here. And you can always go ahead and adjust those layers. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to try and save you some layers as we go. So we're going to go ahead and if you want to, you can tap on foreground and hit the option of flatten. We're done with that completely. We're going to go ahead, though, and block in the rest of the shapes. So we're going to go underneath our foreground and we're going to create two new layers and swipe from left to right on both and group them together. We're going to rename this and we're going to call it land. We're going to make sure we're on the bottom layer out of the two in this group and we're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here, the top of the third column. And your brush wants to be changed to the predominant brush in this whole tutorial, which is going to be drawing and black burn. Maximum opacity. Size wise, you could probably set it to around about 6%, just a size that you're comfortable with. And now because a lot of our drawing guide is quite dark and so is the background area for the moment, we're going to tap on our guide and we're just going to invert it to white. And you should be able to see all those lines reappear. And we can go ahead and just bring the opacity down of that a little bit down to about 30%, just so we can see what we're doing. If again, we go to that bottom layer in the land group, we're going to go ahead and draw in and block in all of the shape that we need in order to draw in our land area. So with this black burn brush, we're going to go ahead and just draw in the sort of cliff edge up here and you can bring that down. I want you to keep it nice and painting like so you don't have to sort of make sure it's like too sort of monoline in a way. You can have little bumps and lumps in there. I'm going to probably bring that down, though, to a 2% brush size. So I can press really, really firm and just kind of get a good block in of the color. I'm going to bring this round and then into here and just follow the guide. And we should be able to create a really sort of big block of black that's going to nicely sort of give us all the land we need. I'm going to run that to here and then you'll see this line here that runs down. You're just going to need to go ahead and just kind of start here and just follow it all the way down. Press quite firm if you want with a smaller brush size just to block that in a little bit more, a little bit easier potentially maybe even like a bit of a, a bit of a raise there in the land. And then it's this bottom side here and the top side that might be a little bit more complex. So if we take a look at the, the sort of guide that I've created, you'll see there that these shapes here and the shapes here all the way along, they are where the land sticks out and we create all those little, lovely little grooves that just make their way out in towards the water. And we're going to use those to create the shapes that we need. So all I want you to do is I want you to kind of follow this one here all the way down in behind here. I'm going to go all the way to the very bottom of the design. And then from here, you can go ahead and then just kind of run your pen along down into there and then just create the drop down in towards the water. So just simple like that. And then you can go ahead and go to the next one. So you can go along, pick a point sort of maybe midway up from the last one and go along and then create that point upwards. Try to vary them up in shape and style and maybe even create like a bit of a curve shape maybe and then bring that one up like so, link them together. And then we've got this little bit that runs off at the back here onto sort of the, the very sort of point of the land. So I'm gonna bring it to around about say here. I'm just gonna cut it a little bit short and then bring that kind of down here because I wanna leave some space to add in some like little rocks down here. And I'll do exactly that. I'll just draw in like a bit of a, a rock just here on the water corner there, just to sort of block that in, create a lovely little shape. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to follow this line all the way up behind our castle. So this is where the land gets a little bit smoother. So you can come up here and then you can just follow that all the way up. All the way up. And then what we need to do is we just need to make sure that this layer that we're drawing on now just follows this line here right in front of our castle. Because the castle I imagine or the building is just slightly behind our land here. It's on the opposite side of the hill almost. So if we now drag and drop our color in, you will probably need to get in here and tidy up some edges here and there where the black burn leaves like a little bit of residue. I don't hate it necessarily, and I don't think it's necessarily a problem, but we just want to triple check that we're happy with our, our landscape. And I'm just now just refining some of these edges down here, seeing if we can just take a look at them, see if we can add in some more content to them. That one sort of comes down a little bit too abrupt and then stops. I can block in a bit of a shape there potentially and create like lots of smaller little blocky areas of stone that sticks out. And I think at some point, whether or not we do it on this layer, I think we will, we'll add in another kind of like rocky shape here just in the water. And then what you might need to do is that almost looks like a car. 
If we go to our eraser and we tap on our eraser and use the black burn brush under drawing, set that size to something really small, about 1%, and just chop the bottom off of it. And then maybe even just sort of draw straight through it just to really break down that shape. Likewise, over here, we'll do the same. Just kind of break down that shape a little bit more. So it's less sort of bulky. And taking a look at that, we've got all of the land in place. So that's looking pretty sweet. I think the only adjustment I would want to make is just here where I just want to vary this up. I want to just bring that round a little bit more, vary that up a little bit. So it's less sort of patterned all the way from sort of one side to the other. But that's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and move on. So we're going to go up a layer to the other empty layer in this group. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and start to block in some of the green areas. So we're going to grab this top color here, the top of the uh, second column there. And we're going to go ahead and block it in the green land on the top. So your guide should also be able to sort of explain that to you a little bit. You've got this line here that runs all the way. And that's kind of the top bit of land there that we need to separate from the stony sort of areas below where the, the grass has been able to grow on the top here. So we can now just go all the way up, even slightly off the edge there of your land before. Just draw that in. Be nice and patient with it. And you may even want to create like these little random sort of streaky areas here, like here, where I've just left a little bit of a gap. And that to me shows that there's maybe like a divot in the land or something. It swoops a little bit down and it will just add some more detail. And I can drop that in here. I can swoop that along and block it in. And we're just going to keep following our guide. And it's important that we then sort of take over the land here. I'm just going to swoop in here just trying to create again a little bit of a divot there where maybe a little bit of stone just makes its way through and then we can go along and eventually we've got this little bit that sticks down there so we can bring the sort of grass down over onto like a bit of a, a platform on top of the, the little cliff edge there i'll just block that in just taking a look at that now the land swoops along here so you can block this line in nice and heavy this is the top edge after all of the grass. So we want to make sure that that is fairly strong and defined so we can nicely separate our, our areas from one another. So I've left a couple of little gaps there. And then this runs along here and it goes all the way along to the opposite side. So we're just going to swoop along there. I'll create like another one of these little drop down areas of the grass just to kind of create like a bit of a transition between those two areas. And we'll do the same up here. And then as we get off here, I'm going to definitely do the same here where I'll create like a little bit of a swoop and then just let that grass just come to an end. So I've just left like a bit of a gap here and then I'm going to make my way up this edge, just coloring this in like so. And then you can press really firm if you want to even increase the brush size and block this in. Again, we're going for that painting aesthetic as I mentioned in the intro. You don't need to kind of stress over it, especially if you've got any sort of like little gaps here and there. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes they can add character. So if you want to, you can leave little areas of gap here and there in between the land, like here, just little variations. It just Maybe it's a divot of some sort in the grass and it just creates a really strong shadow. So just like we did before, we're gonna bring this color all the way up this edge here, just in front of our building up here. And you wanna follow all the way up to the edge of the land that you created before. So we're just gonna bring that in there. We're gonna go along this edge of the castle. Don't worry if there's a little bit of green there, a little bit of a little bit of a darkness, should I say, from the layer underneath. That's perfectly fine as well. Again, just trying to create some of these streaks here, just to break up the land right on the top of the cliff edge here. And then I'll maybe just bring that down with a nice solid line all the way down into here and then curve that into there. I should now be able to drag and drop my color in, take a look at it, see if there's any sort of gaps in there that I do feel that need to be filled in. If there's any little gaps there that I take a look at, I think actually, you know, that maybe adds like a little bit of character, a little bit of something happening on the land, then we'll leave it. So now that that's all blocked in, we can go ahead and continue blocking in some other shapes as well. So we'll collapse our land group down. We're going to go ahead and go right to the back of our design. So we're going to go ahead and tap on the water, create a new layer and drag it underneath the water. We're going to go ahead and work on the sky. So we're going to go ahead and create two layers, swipe from left to right, group them together, and rename the group, of course, and call it sky. And the bottom layer out of the two, we're going to go to our colors and grab the middle of the far right column. Go to your brush and change it to airbrushing and the soft brush. Good size, probably around about 20% will be nice and 
good enough size on it that you can then blend that out and be in full control. And we want this kind of diagonal line here that you can see me drawing in. Just a little bit of a diagonal line. You want a little bit brighter up in here on the right hand side, but just a little bit of that darkness in the distance and right up on the edge of your, your canvas there. And then we can go ahead and you can use the extra layer here if you want to just be in full control. So we'll go into the extra layer here, tap on our colors and grab the top right color of the palette and just go along your horizon here, brightening that up. And again, a bit of a diagonal line, just creating a lovely gradient between all these colors. So maybe a little bit higher on the right, but a little bit of blue and you should end up with this gradient color. Now, if you need to, you can pinch those two layers together. They're just there if you want to sort of make some additions or changes. What we are going to then do though is we're going to create two new layers and swipe from left to right on both of these inside the sky group and group them again and we'll rename this and call it clouds so so that it's nicely organized so group within a group is possible we're going to go to the bottom layer out of the two and we're going to go ahead and block in our clouds and actually finish the sky area because i want to be able to save some of your layers as we go so we're going to crack on now with the clouds so we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab the bottom color here in the second column from the right. We're going to go back to our brush and go to the optional drawing and black burn. We're going to go to the larger size. I've got 28% and maximum opacity. And we're going to go ahead and block in some cloud shapes. And they just need to be simple, like large press presses here and just sort of curly shapes. You can always get in there in a minute and define them a little bit more if you want to and streak some color across. I want to create like a big lumpy area over here or cloud and just bring that along. I want to connect the two together. So I'll just sort of block that in a little bit there, round off this shape a little bit more, maybe round that off a little bit here too. And then at the bottom, you can maybe just wiggle your pen along the very bottom edge, you know, allow some little scrapes here and there, little areas of the paint to just kind of drag in. I know this is an inking brush, but I was think it's quite a good painting brush to be honest so that's why I always refer to it as that and I'll block that in over on the right hand side there so we've just got this kind of one two three maybe even four peak sort of design to it you could always go ahead and grab your eraser it should still be the Blackburn brush which it is and I can just chop away into here maybe and just leave a little bit of residue don't worry we can always add in some more residue later but you can just chop away into there and clouds don't need to be overly sort of complicated of course but they can be a little tricky at the same time to draw. So just try and create some just fluffier shapes in there. Always jump between your eraser and your, your brush just in case you chop away at something a little bit too much and then you can round it off a little bit more. Create some more rounded puffy shapes in there. And that's looking pretty sweet. I like how that looks. We've got some good positioning on there. Let's go ahead and color it in. So we're gonna to go to the layer above it. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're gonna grab the middle color in the second column from the right. I'm going to bring the brush size down though to 10% and we're just going to very, very easily just block in some color on the top edge here. So I'm imagining the light source of course is over on the right hand side. It's a little bit higher. And then so we can just go ahead and just block in some areas here. So uh, what I'm looking for is I'm looking at my design and thinking, okay, let's imagine that maybe this is a circular shape here. So I would add the color here. If I was to take a look over here, I, I'd maybe break this one down. Maybe there's a circular shape here. Maybe there's a circle behind there and maybe there's a circle here. And then all you do is every time you look for a circle, you just block the color in on that top right area. But then you can get a bit fancy with it and add in little sort of streaks here and there. So I can go around the top edge here of what I can think is another blob. I can bring that down. I can add in like a patch here, like a very small area and a couple of squiggly lines towards the bottom area. Maybe send all this off of the canvas, off the right hand side, away out of frame. We'll just go ahead and just squiggle down here creating some, again, just bright areas where I'm imagining the sunlight's just crashing onto our sky here and onto our clouds. And you can be really sort of sort of over the top with it. You can definitely spend a lot of time really blocking these in, but I really urge you just to chuck it in. I know that's something on your bingo card potentially for today's tutorial, but chuck the color in and just chuck it on and then just refine as we did just a second ago. You know, use your eraser and maybe just block in some color and then take it away and then keep going backwards and forwards between them. Create these little random patches as well, little areas where just a little bit of cloud sticking up enough to get some color. And then you can do something a bit drastic in a way. You can go ahead and maybe sort of brighten up down here and then maybe even sort of curve this like in a sort of backwards fashion a bit more like this. And then maybe this one over here just gets a little bit on the top edge and maybe that's it. You know, some very kind of simple-ish cloud shapes there. And again, I urge you to grab your eraser 
chop through some of these areas, really thin some areas out if you want to, you know, create little cutaways in here, little sort of random streaks through there, break them down a little bit, nothing too sort of designy. I want you to keep it real sort of fluid and free and don't get too sort of bogged down in those details. I want this design to be a real sort of painting style where it's nice and free. So try not to sort of stress over sort of chucking this in, just some sort of fluffy shapes like this will do the trick. And once you've done those mid-tones, we can then go ahead and create another new layer. Go to our colors and move up a color, so the top of the second column from the right. And again, repeat, except now you're gonna look for the way you've added in those mid-tones and only kind of add some color towards the top edge of those. So a little bit of color here and a little bit on there too. You don't have to do it absolutely everywhere. You can leave big gaps. You can sort of chuck some on there, a little bit on there, and then maybe a little bit there. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of a gap and chuck some just down here. Let's take a look over here. Maybe this big chunky area here that swoops down. I'll just patch in some color there and little random patches again will look great. Little sort of areas where you can just chuck that color on. Let it just splash on top of some of those mid-tones that we created. And you should end up creating like this cloud-like effect here. Again, we're keeping it fairly simple and nice and painting style-like. Now we're going to go ahead and smudge these. So we're going to go to our smudge tool and tap on our smudge tool. And of course, use the drawing option of the black burn brush. I've brought the opacity to 80% and I've got the size set to 8%. If we go back to our mid-tones here, this is why we separated the layers. I'm gonna to go to the mid layer here and I'm gonna start smudging. Now this brush is a bit funny for smudging. You may wanna try something a little bit different potentially, something that's a little bit easier to use. I want it to match the aesthetic, so I've kind of stuck with it. But on some of the back areas here of the mid-tones, especially, we're just gonna kind of smudge them out and just seeing what we can just smudge and little random squiggly shapes, leave some areas nice and sharp. And what I mean by that is that it's just the painting that we created before. Leave some of those nice and sharp, but allow certain areas to be nice and sort of smudged out and blended out. And you can grab your blending and really push it as far or as little as you like and create whatever sort of fluffy shapes that you want in your sky. Just softening up a little bit of these edges, but pushing them a little bit as we go all off towards that kind of left hand side. Again, I'm trying to look for areas where I can maybe leave them and I'm just smudging almost in like little circle shapes as well, just to kind of smudge around and seeing what we can just blend out rather than sort of drag out. So like there, just a little bit of a blending down. Can we blend some of these little smaller guys here? Lovely stuff, let's blend out the bottom edge here. Pressing really firm, you can see how large my brush gets there and just pushing that around. That area there looks a little bit too blob-like, so we're just gonna push that around, seeing what other shapes, and I can push into my smudges as well and somewhat erase from them. So just push inwards if you like, then push back out. So I'm pushing into the shape and then pushing back out just to vary up the shape a little bit. And maybe I'll smudge in here just a little bit to kind of blend that together. And of course, we're gonna repeat this particular step for the highlight tones as well. So what you do here isn't your final, it's final once we just add in some blending on those brighter tones that sit on the very top. You see at the very bottom here, I'm smudging these out a little bit more just trying to get a little bit of a blend out at the bottom here. And I've got quite a lot of amount of color in here, so maybe I could sort of do with breaking them down a tiny bit and squiggle in the pen to create some wiggly shapes in there. But that's looking pretty sweet. I'm pretty happy with that. We'll go ahead and repeat. So we'll go up to our highlights and we'll do exactly the same. We'll just start smudging those into the shapes and the colors underneath. So blending them out again, leave some nice and sharp. You don't have to do every single area of the blob of color. You know, leave some areas really sharp. That's the best thing about cloud sometimes is sometimes you do end up with these lovely sharp edges and you also have just a little bit of a break off where it gets a little bit softer. I'm just gonna blend these together, seeing what we can come up with. Little curls, little random flicks. Seeing what sort of aesthetic. I like some of these streaks in here, so I don't wanna necessarily touch them. I wanna leave them nice and kind of streaky very sort of painting again to match the aesthetic of the design and that's not a crime you can do that and it will match up to the rest of the the design for today so i got some nice clouds in there i'm going to leave them as they are right there now before we sort of finish the sky we want to add in some little areas of sort of residue and stuff in the background of the sky so i'm just going to drop drop out of the clouds group for a minute and go down to here i'm going to create a new layer 
I'm going to go ahead and go to my colors. I'm going to go back to the base color for the clouds. So this one here, the bottom of that second column from the right. And then just in some gaps here, maybe just sort of squiggle in some little break offs here and there, just a few though, like literally like a handful or a break off here and there. And that's it. Maybe like one a little bit higher up there. I don't want any repeating kind of options here. Like I don't want to see too much repetition. And then on the same layer, we're going to go ahead and then grab the mid-tone color here. And we'll try and just streak some color here in the sky. So in between your gaps here, just sort of streak in. And you can see it's extremely, extremely light in here. I'm trying not to press too firm at all. And I'm trying not to do too much because we do want to add in some of the, the highlight tone in here as well. So I'm just kind of streaking this in a little bit, trying to break down the sky. And then we'll go ahead and go to our colors and grab the top color in the second column from the right and then streak these in again. So these are your brighter tones here. You can just kind of streak these in, in the gaps maybe, or see what you can come up with. Little sort of flick offs and break offs here and there from your clouds, like a little squiggle here and there. Little wiggle, just to, just to detail the sky just a little bit. Lovely stuff. And that's all we want to do. Now the final layer to add to this group, we're going to go ahead and tap on our clouds group here in the sky and create a new layer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add in a bit of a glow to the bottom of the sky. So making sure again, we are that top color here in the uh, second column from the right. We're going to go back to our brush and go back to airbrushing and the soft brush. We'll make the brush size around about sort of 25% nice and large. And I just want you to go along your horizon there, blend over the top of your clouds and kind of just add in a soft glow at the bottom here to just blend out your clouds. And they should then just nicely fade into the distance a little bit. And you kind of lose a little bit of the detail bar the top edge. But your horizon now should be nice and bright. And of course, now you're done with your sky, you can collapse the group down, you can tap on sky and you can flatten it into one layer. Of course, if you want to make a change later on, that's impossible to do really. So it's up to you based on your iPad and how many layers, of course, that you've got. Let's go ahead then and start to add in some of the details on the land first. So I'm going to go back into the land group and we're going to go ahead and go above the green here, the grass. We're going to create a new layer and tap on it and clip it to the grass. And we're going to go to our colors. We're going to move into this middle tone here in the second column. We want our brush to go back to the option of drawing and blackburn. And I'm going to set the brush to 10%, but it's really important now that we drop the opacity down to 55%. That way now, for example, just very quickly, if I draw in, it's really light, but if I let go and then draw back over the top, look at how I'm getting some sort of different tones in here. We've got like a sort of brighter tone in the sort of original 55%. So you can layer some color on top of each other here and create some really interesting kind of looks to the land. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my guide. I don't necessarily need that on for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and just swoop in some green here and just a little bit on this top edge and a little bit in the gaps and create little gaps and darker areas. They don't all need to be nice and bright. You know, you can leave little darker areas here and there, especially if you can identify like a bit of a mound here. I may want to erase into this in a moment. I'm going to bring in some more color along here. Just bring that in and then a little bit maybe along that extra little bit of grass there that drops down on its own. And we'll move across. Again, I'm just trying to look for where I see the land coming down. Could I imagine that maybe the, the light goes up here and then maybe it sort of creates like a bit of a, a groove here and then just maybe links back together potentially just above it. And I want you to use the brush. I want you to use the brush and the, the residue and the sort of sort of scratchy look to it that it creates and the texture and just break down the, the grass into little sort of patchy areas. So I can see here and identify there's a little bit of a kind of a little bit of a hill here. So I just want to try and sort of darken up the back area of it by simply just leaving it. So just leaving a little bit of darkness just there. I definitely want to go ahead and make this one a little bit more colorful. So I'll, I'll drop the brush size down to 5% and I'll probably keep it there as well. I just want to brighten that up there, add in some areas here. And again, every time you sort of overlap your previous color, you're going to create some extra hues in there. That is wicked. That's exactly what we want. Now, as I mentioned, we've got a bit of a hill here. I've undone that because I can imagine that the hill is coming down here. So then it starts to swoop down in this direction here. So let's try and see if we can sort of let that light get as high as it can there. But we'll brighten up this top edge up here first. So we're going to continue doing the same kind of effects. This area over here, though, is going to get absolutely bathed in the sunlight. So we can really block this in 
leave some tiny little gaps here and there, but I definitely want to kind of block that in and let that light come all the way down here. And then maybe it starts to curl around a tiny bit, but makes its way down towards that cliff edge. Little sort of random green areas will be nice to leave. And we've got multiple colors to add in here as well. So I'm just blocking in that top edge. I'll block in this very top edge as well. And maybe even just streak in some additional hues in here as well. Just trying to show how the land maybe swoops down a little bit. And then as you make your way just to here, can we just maybe sort of raise the, the sort of green area just over this little mound here and then down onto there. I want to I want to brighten up a few of these little areas on the edge though and then can we just allow that to with a little bit of a tip of our pen can we just sort of blend that out you see if I tip my pen on its side I get this much more sort of uh, edgy kind of look to it and I end up with this kind of patchy look to the land and then I can do the same down here I can just blend up a tiny bit up towards there and just add in little patches nothing too detailed nothing too heavy with the color it kind of just blends out a little bit. So we're trying to create like a bit of a blend in here and leave a little bit of a darker patch just there on that edge. Of course, if you end up potentially going too far with it, just go to your eraser, grab your eraser and make sure it's the same brush as before and just start erasing into here and kind of swoop down, chop away. Is there anywhere that you think you could maybe sort of really break this down and just chop all the way back down the hill a little bit? You know, maybe on this top edge, I could get rid of the color there and then go back to my brush and then repeat. So you, you don't have to nail it first time at all. You know, go back in, break it down again, see what you can do a second time. And maybe the build up of all the little bits of color and the residue that I always say from the brush will just hopefully maybe add in some further detail potentially, you know, by erasing and going back over yourself a few times, you may end up creating that extra level of detail. It's not critical by the way that this area is dark. You can patch that in if you wish. But it's just something I'm trying to go for here with just a little sort of patchy area, a little bit of a darker sort of twist on the land there. Just to add in a little bit more of an interesting landscape to look at. And again, I really want that patchiness in there. I want that kind of scrapey patchiness, little darker, little grooves here and there. That looks pretty cool. Let's then go ahead and move up to the top here. Now, what you might want to do is go ahead and turn on your guide at this point and we'll go ahead and tap on our guide and invert it again and if i go back to my layer for the green that i was working on i can now see where roughly the castle is or the building and i can just not add any color around the sort of left hand side of it i want that to be nice and sort of dark nice and shaded and we want to keep that shadow aspect back there but we can patch in some color of course and just show how it brings itself down the hillside and these lines that we're drawing in now really help to show someone that's looking at it. How does the land move? You are literally directing their eye down the hillside to show, OK, it really does have a huge elevation there and the change in the land. So once we block that in, I know it might look a little bit messy, but it all comes together in the end. Just trust the process. We're going to go ahead then and go to our layers. We'll go ahead and create another new layer. We'll go to our colors. We'll go ahead and grab the bottom color in the second column there. We'll go back to the layer and tap on it and clipping mask it. Now this one's even brighter and this is where we're really going to bathe certain areas with the lighting. Again, we're down to that 55%. We're going to go ahead and just bathe the lighting in certain areas here on our hillside. So like a little, little bit of a gap there potentially and then bathe it up the hill here. Swooping those lines down. You may completely overlap a lot of your work. And that's fine. Again, use that 55% opacity. So what I mean is just take your pen off of the land, off of the canvas and just let it draw back in. So you can go over it again, draw it back in. I'm just trying to add in some little areas of green. Seeing, I'm just imagining again, that lighting's coming all the way across. It's just bathing that area. Where I've maybe got this little mound here on the left hand side, can I sort of bathe in a little bit more lighting there? I'm trying to imagine where is the lighting going to hit? What can I convincingly explain to you where that lighting hits? You know, if you again, I always always say if you can come up with a convincing story, that's all you need. So you can blend here. You can just say, right, the light's going to catch there. It's going to run into maybe a bit of a flatter plane here. So I can blend them together. 
and then create like a flat edge there on the top surface which is just getting again bathed in that light you can create little patches here and there if you want you're going to end up creating a lot of detail by doing so like the odd little patch here and there that's just getting some lighting i'm not going to over complicate it i'm just going to brighten up that top edge there i just want it to be a large patch of light that's just swooping down towards our cliff edge so something simple like this the next step is to then move into the uh, sort of rocky areas below so we will go ahead and we'll leave these layers for a moment i don't want you to compress them down as it currently stands we're going to go ahead and go down though to the big block of the dark color the main block of this and we'll create a new layer tap on it clipping mask it go to our colors we're going to go ahead and we're going to block in the brighter tones first so it's actually this color here the middle of the fourth column your brush size can be 10% or 6%, but the opacity again wants to be 55. And what we want to do is again, where that lighting's coming across, which areas is it going to hit? Well, we've got these sort of pointed ledges here. Just remember that kind of points down to the water. What I want you to do is I want you to kind of dash in like this. I want you to create these little blob dashes where each individual sort of streak that you make there is almost like a individual boulder or rock of some sort in this cliff edge so i can sort of block these in overlap them a little bit like so and every time you get like a point inwards how can you go ahead and identify that how can you break that out of the silhouette here that we've got so like here i'll bring that all the way down all the way down towards the bottom here and then we're breaking that out you can now identify quite clearly these are little peaks that are separate from sort of the land as a block i can bring this down here again and just big blocks smaller blocks and i want you to just dash it in because in a minute we're going to break it down so at the minute just block that in and then here i want to be kind of brave to show like there's a big cliff right in front of us just down here so it goes all the way up to the top here and it's just right in front of us just a little bit beyond this little crest so there's a big one just here and then just behind them you can add in little sort of smaller dashes maybe right down towards the rocks at the bottom potentially you know be brave with it get these little patches in here overlap them let the colors sort of layer on top of each other we've got this tiny little fella here let's go ahead and add in a little bit of brighter tone on the top edge of it like a little something simple like this we've then got the cliff edge over here on the right let's really kind of again just show okay how can we maybe create some swooping lines almost so it's like a swooping line isn't it that runs all the way down here you can see they're a little bit angled in certain spots and can i just add in some areas here in the silhouette that i can break out a little bit by just adding in a little bit of highlight on it so this is something i've done many times with the dry uh dry ink brush and the black burn where i've drawn these touch of stars before but this is a slight variation on it where we're introducing the 55 percent and this is what i always try to explain in my live streams as well can you go ahead and make something that's similar to what you normally do like again a landscape but do something slightly different a minor change that may give you a little bit more of a different sort of tool now to your arsenal of the sort of things that you can add to a design to you know really pack it out with some different textures and styling now looking at this i could probably block this in here a tiny bit more maybe the odd little block here i want them to be nice and separate don't be afraid in your shadows to add in like the odd little block like this and maybe a little sort of line off of it just to sort of break it out a tiny bit and a couple of tiny teeny ones in there they're just getting a little bit of light now that's looking wicked and then all we need to do there is go ahead and move into a slightly brighter tone so we're going to move down to the bottom color in that fourth column so very much the same as what we kind of did on the top surface i'm now going to get you to go over the top of some of these areas that you've identified as the highlighted areas and block them in again with a similar content and style so you just patching in these little sort of patches and blobs and blocks and don't worry if they kind of don't sit directly on top that's not a problem the only thing you kind of need to factor in is again where's that lighting coming from so you know can i go ahead and for example just block in a little one in there i may need to change my brush size if i want to but the light's coming across now try to sort of imagine would, would any of these blocks the light you know this one here can i go ahead and maybe add in a few of it on there let's just imagine maybe that's blocking the light and likewise maybe this one doesn't get quite so much either so maybe i can just add in a, a couple of smaller ones here but then we brighten up this one the most you know so you don't have to sort of keep them all the same this one here gets a little bit more light because for some reason the way the lighting structured and the land is getting a bit more light likewise just here in front of us as well and a little bit more on that sort of cliff all the way down to the water 
and you should then have this nice sort of variation in your land and your water let's not forget this little guy down here add in a bit of color on that too and then we're going to go ahead and move into the shaded side of this sort of blocks here so we're going to move to this dark blue tone instead so the middle of the third column we're going to zoom in down here and all the land is flowing this way it's all pointing down here so you kind of just want to follow the same color and contour that you created before and i'm going to bring the brush size down i'm going to bring it down to the six percent so i can create some slightly smaller gaps and again your opacity is nice and low and all you're doing is just creating the blocks in the gaps dragging that land all the way down to the water's edge so in here i'm going to start to dash in some blue areas in the gaps taking a look at it that's pretty sweet i want to kind of leave this gap as much as possible in this area nice and dark i'm going to layer on top a couple bit more a couple bit more a little bit more of the blue there so i was looking at what i was doing and then we'll block in some color here down towards the water's edge get some color in here so essentially what these are these are stones still and big areas of sort of boulder but they are more stone like but also they're in the shade so they're not getting any light so that's how we're trying to break this down now dashing in some color you don't need to do it in every single spot but make sure you kind of get some up here towards the top edge and then a couple more lines in there locking them in layering them on top of each other creating that sort of rocky area down towards the ocean and then again we'll repeat with a slightly brighter tone so the bottom of that third column now and then you just want to get in here and maybe just sort of brighten up be brave some little areas here of the stone and leave some areas of course a little bit darker don't forget to just layer some on top of each other though you've got that 55 percent so we can just be bold in here blocking in some color i want some them some of them to touch like so can i just block one in there too and can we just add in some larger blobs up here and you might be thinking at this point Joel, where does the detail come in here how do we actually make these look like stones almost well we're going to add in some very simple effects in a moment at the minute we just kind of want to break that down to its very simplest sort of blocky color now i'm going to undo a lot of these ones back here because i only want to add in a few at this back edge over here and leave that a little bit sort of less full of content in comparison to these other areas over here we can possibly add in like a little patch on the back of that rock and a little patch on the back of here too just to make sure it fits the rest of the aesthetic now this is the point where the detail comes in so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to our layers we're going to create a new layer i'm not going to clip it i'm going to leave it separated i'm going to go to my colors though. i'm going to grab the base color for this area which is this color here the top of the third column I'm going to bring my brush all the way down to 1% size and I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100. And what we're going to end up introducing here is some lines that simply just run all the way over the rocks and break them up. So what I want you to do is, this is literally, honestly, super random. All you need to do is follow the contour of the land. So can I just run some lines through here, break up some of these shapes and just run some color through them, creating little grooves and little sort of random shapes so some of them can be sort of straight lines here some of them can be like little points like this and maybe you break it off of the point there so i've gone down in a v and then created a line off from there and then what you can do is you can just take a look at some of your lines and your areas here of your your big rock areas and if you go any sort of too far of course just grab your eraser and just cut it off at the very bottom there but just take a look at your big blocky areas and can you run some lines here to just break up our rocky area i want to sh show some real sort of detail and erosion in here but i want it to be simple as anything zoom out take a look at the overall impression of that in comparison to the ones beside it don't get lost in those details as i always say zoom all the way out take a look and look at the compression how it just compresses the whole thing down and it just then creates all these little sort of groove lines now try not to do too many try to sort of keep the uh, details a little bit more simple and just a few lines running through here you know they don't even need to be sort of consistent in a way they don't need to be sort of um in a way sort of quite densely populated in one area you can allow your lines to just have a gap in between and allow some of that patchiness of the color to come through we'll repeat over here don't be afraid to go along the top edge here as well and like kind of sharpen up the shape and maybe even I'll break this one off completely and I'll create like another line that comes through here. And now I've completely changed the land and how it looks. Now, I would not do a line like this. That is something I would avoid because 
you're sending the user's eye from instead of going straight down here towards the water's edge you're saying okay and then it goes this way and now you've got to try and convince the person looking at it how that stone work works now that does work you can for example go along here and this one here where i've got a lovely little patch here i could separate that you know i could separate that by coming down here i could then go behind it in my mind and then sort of come down through here and then maybe try and separate it here but to be honest with you, I don't want you to necessarily do that because I don't want you to overcomplicate the land. I just This is a new sort of technique and a way for some of these designs that I've done with creating this rock. So all I want you to do is kind of nail it in just its simplest form. Listen, if you are feeling more confident with it, feel free to do something like that. But ultimately, I don't think you necessarily need to. Now, I'm taking a look at my design and I'm seeing these three here. This one here is extremely dense with the lines. So I could grab my eraser and bring that down a little bit, still the black burn brush. And I could maybe delete some of these groove lines here to sort of simplify it. And that's the best thing about separating your layers. Sometimes it gives you some options to later on maybe go, right, okay, actually, that was maybe too much. Let me just back out of that a little bit. Let me sort of reel it back in. We'll do the same, of course, all the way over to the opposite side here. So I've got this big groove of a rock up here again i'm just erasing every time i get sort of really close to the edge i've separated that i've broken it down into two can i maybe sharpen up this edge here this line here by adding in a dark line and then maybe even run another crack or two through there and all the way down towards the water's edge again every time i get a little bit too close to the the water i'll break that down and then i'll just introduce line after line taking a look at it and sometimes you may even look at it and go right one simple line there is enough that's all i want to do just one simple line to sharpen up the shape a tiny bit more is just enough that i'm happy with the effect so you don't have to keep going and keep going at the same level of consistency and sort of um, line work just wait until you hit something that goes right that looks awesome i'm going to leave that and again i'm going to go back into this one i'm going to just simplify it down even more i'm going to break out some of these lines down here i might even just sharpen that one out a little bit on its own and just leave some block of color there these look wicked, really happy with them. Of course, I just need to do these ones right in front of us. So I'm just going to create some lines that just run through here and try and sort of break them down a little bit, create some cracks in here, some awesome little shapes down here, and then break them off at little angles as well, because these ones are a little bit closer to us. Can we intensify the level of detail just a little bit by just creating lines and avenues for the lines to sit on? And that's it. That's kind of this effect and how you kind of build that color up. Of course, now you could go back in and add in some different tones here and there. The only thing I want you to do, though, is I want you to go back up to this layer here, the greenery of the land. We're going to go ahead and go to our colors and grab that green again, the top of the third column, a second column. We're going to continue with the same brush, but we're going to go ahead and make the brush size 2%. We're going to bring the opacity right down to 31%. And then just where we've got the break between the grass and the land just want you to kind of squiggle your pen it's extremely extremely light here just squiggle your pen and just kind of add in the lightest greenery area now you can overlap your color a little bit if you want now and because i'm happy with my rock work i just want to blend the grass down a tiny bit into the stony area so i'm now just trying to see if i can patch in some additional areas of green to break down that kind of solid shape and create almost like a fuzziness to it and a bit uncertainty of looking at it and going, where does that grass connect? You know, this is extremely light what I'm drawing in right now. It's extremely light on top of the darker tone here. I just want to see if I can just blend those two areas a little bit more to show maybe some grass just hanging on to the top of the rocks here. But also it's in the shadows maybe, so it is a little bit darker. So I can just run in some just blending almost between the two areas of the land. Now I would urge you to potentially spend some more time, you know, bringing the stonework up a little bit. Go back into this layer here with all the stonework on it. And maybe we could grab the base colour of that brown again, the middle of the fourth column. Bring that brush back to 55% and where it was before, about sort of 6% with the brush size. And can you maybe just dash in a little bit of brown here just to bring the stone all the way up and close to our land so can you just patch in a little bit more just to connect these two together we don't want to have like a big dark line that just sort of takes over between these two you know, it separates the two likewise go back in as well with this color here the darkest out of the shadow colors the middle of the third column 
and just get up towards there and see if you can just patch in a few areas of these darker stony colors just to sort of again connect the land a little bit more to that like cliff edge over there over here in this gap i'm definitely guilty of that so i'm going to dash in some in there and dash in some just in behind here as well so now we've done that side we're going to go ahead and do it in this area as well so we can go ahead and stick it on the same layers so we've got this layer here with all the color we can go ahead and go to our colors and we can add in some darker tones now the first color i want you to add in though is this one here the top of the fifth column there our opacity i want you to max that out and we'll keep the brush size about six percent in this area here it's very very dark and this color here is extremely subtle now you should be able to see it on your own screen but i want you to kind of run some swooping lines just down the cliff edge here some swooping lines with this brush and just kind of block in the kind of blueprint for how you can add in the color here it is extremely subtle now we're going to go ahead and on the same layer go to our colors and grab this color here the middle of the fifth column we're going to go ahead and we'll set that brush size to about six or seven percent and we'll go ahead and add in some color on this side and in exactly the same fashion now i've got this little sort of peak here so i'm going to dash in some color here but first of all we want to make sure our opacity is set to 55 percent so we can again patch in those colors and i'm just patching in the cliff and how it is going to nicely run down here i'm going to make the brush size 10 percent. i'm going to be a bit braver here and just kind of bulk in the color a little bit more and then just keep going so go down this cliff edge here at the top bulk that in patch it all in create little grooves and streaks and patches whatever you want to do you can leave big gaps here and there you can connect them at the top and then leave like a big gap ridge there and maybe it comes down into like a flat plane a little bit closer towards the water there again all this is is just prep in essentially just before we add in our uh, little line work that we just did a second ago so we're just patching in creating this cliff side and we're trying to create lots of random hues of color that's why we're doing the 55 percent and layering it on top and when they layer on top of each other successfully you get this fantastic amount of just variation in the color and it's just real life a little bit more a little bit more sort of realistic with the sort of depth and the change in the hues etc now i'm running that cliff all the way up into there and then once we've done that we'll go to our colors we'll go ahead and grab the bottom color in that uh, fifth column there and we'll do exactly the same we're going to go in here now and patch in some more color you may want to reduce the brush size and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of patching on top of some of those lines and grooves and whatnot that we created here. Again, to create some more variation and hue of the stonework here. I'm going to definitely separate this here by just creating like a bit more of a cliff edge down in towards the water. And then maybe a few more down into there. It doesn't need to be absolutely everywhere as long as you can create this kind of really stylish kind of rocky area. Just like we did down here, you'll have all the sort of content you need to add in then your little line work so once we've got a little bit of an effect like this that's looking pretty sweet that's looking awesome let's go ahead then and go to our layers we'll go up a layer again to the line work that we created before you can see it flashing at the bottom there so on the same layer we can go ahead and go to our colors and grab the top color here in the third column we can go to our brush we can go ahead and go to our blackburn but we're going to bring it all the way down to one percent bring the opacity back up to a hundred and let's just follow the contour of these lines so now we're swooping down towards the left hand side so i can go ahead maybe and sharpen up this area here and create lots of grooves that run down in towards this point here so i can create all these little line work lines breaking it down you don't want to make them too long here and there like i've made quite a few there that are fairly long but not too many of them it will look quite tidy if you can create some little small lines here that just join up and you create all these little shards almost of all the the stone in there so i'm going to bring that down i'm going to bring that across and create some interesting avenues and shapes and just line after line just trying to break down that sort of stone edge and at the top here try and be a little bit more vertical with your line so create little sort of v shapes and whatnot like little v's like this and then let the line run off but try and be a little bit more vertical with the lines to show the steepness at the very top here you know here essentially it swoops like that a little bit sort of flatter in this area but here over this on the other side make this really sharp you know bring that in like this and then create like a groove again bear in mind that we're not clipped so 
you know, just run up to that edge where you can, create some lines in there, link them together, let that line then just run off and create its own little groove and channel and just keep connecting them together and you'll create all these lovely little shard style effects of the steepness and the angular cutouts of all the stone along this cliff edge here. Lovely stuff. And we'll just keep going. And then every time you sort of draw a line and whatnot, you end up creating a shape in the middle and that's a rock. That's a boulder shape area. And that is just where then hues then take over and each rock then has all this wicked patchiness to it. So I'm just creating all these little grooves all the way down towards the very bottom. Creating some more here. Trying to see what we can come up with. And can we keep going at the very top? You don't have to add in tons and you don't have to sort of make them sort of too consistent either. You know, take a look at the opposite side over here. Make sure you're happy with the level of detail. You know, you don't want to sort of overdo it on one side because then you might have to revisit the opposite side. So I'm constantly looking at the bottom of my design here to try and see, hang on, have I done enough or have I done too much? And should I sort of scale that back a little bit? Again, when you pinch out, we're going to get to this point here where we're just all the way back here in our design and, you know, the details get compressed. That's always what we want to do. Just make sure we don't get lost in them. I'm pressing really firm here at the bottom here to create some grooves right at the bottom. And look here, I've created one, two, three, four lines there right next to each other to create some really sort of small areas of quite heavy detail. But also I want to create these grooves in the avenues of the stonework and how it just flows down towards the ocean. So I'm just really trying to break into that those shapes a lot more and be really brave and create all those avenues that we can then build on top of. So I'm creating groove after groove and line after line. It's a bit of a patient sort of uh, tutorial with this sort of part. You know, you want to sort of slowly build it up and then see if you can build lots of smaller areas here. You know, the water is at the bottom here going to really sort of batter the cliff edge here on a daily basis. So maybe you can just break that up right towards the bottom here to create all these really small areas where Again, they're just breaking off. They're just being eroded day after day by the water. So can you just keep going, breaking that down, you know, create some dark grooves in here, literally cut away if you want as well, like really sort of break that down. And I'm really happy with how that looks. I don't think we necessarily need to add in any more detail over there. There's quite a lot on there already. Now we are going to go ahead and somewhat repeat all of those steps for a little bit of land that's going to sit in the background. So what we can go ahead and do is we can go and we can collapse our land down. We're going to tap on our water and we're going to create a new layer. If we bring back in the guide and we bring it back up to 100% and maybe even tap on the guide and invert it so it's white, you might just about be able to see this area of land back here. We're going to repeat the same steps for it, but it's going to be a little bit quicker because this is a little bit further away. We don't have to kind of detail it quite as much. So on this layer here that we just created in front of our water, we're going to go ahead and create a new one, swipe it from left to right, and we'll call it, we'll call it, uh, let's call it far ground. So in the far ground, we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom layer out of the two. We should already be on the top color here in the third column. We want to go to our brush in the black burn, set the brush size to about 2%. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow this line here all the way down towards our water's edge. It's going to run in behind there and it comes in from here too. So we're just gonna run along here. And this one's gonna be a little bit more simple. We don't wanna sort of over detail this one again, it's further away, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then as long as you link up these areas here, I've created a big blob there, but that's not too much of a problem. I'll drag and drop that in, and we've got some more land then in the distance. It helps fill out the rest of the scene a little bit. We're gonna to go to the empty layer above it, go to our colors and grab the top color here in the third column and we're going to go ahead and follow this wavy line that you can see here so we're going to go along here and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit sort of more uh, bumpy and lumpy a little bit more messy in comparison again it's further away and you just need to make sure you go up to that edge if not slightly above it color this in as you go and we'll just block this in down the cliff edge Chucking that color on. Can we add like a little bit of a green area towards the very bottom? I think we can. So we'll chuck some color there as well. And we're just going to repeat those steps. So let's just crack on with the grass quickly. We're going to create a new layer. Tap on it. Clipping mask it. 
Go to your colors and grab the middle color in the third column, uh, second column again, sorry. And we're gonna go ahead and go along this top edge. Now watch the difference though. Look how much easier and quicker we're gonna make this. We're gonna just block this color in down here. We're gonna follow the contour and swoop some lines down just to show that dramatic fall off. It's way further back. We just wanna kind of give the illusion of the, the same sort of principles that we created before but we can leave little gaps here and there just to again show like little gaps and breakouts in the land and divots. So a little something simple like this. And let's go ahead in fact, just go straight to the bottom color in the, uh, what column is that? Sorry, the second column again. And we'll just patch in a little bit of the brighter tone on the top edge there, a little bit along the top surface, leave a gap and then just add some back here. Keep it simple and leave it like that. That's all we need to do for that back area. We're going to go ahead though and go down to the land here. Don't worry, we're going to compress this in a moment, the far ground. We've got this block of land back there. We'll create a new layer in front of it. Tap on it and clipping mask it. We'll go to our colors and we'll grab those stony colors. So the middle of the fourth column. Opacity wants to be set back to 55%. And again, we're going to create those kind of stony shapes. So we're going to patch in some color here. I'm going to make sure it's about sort of five or 6%. Patch in some stony color. And let's imagine that there's like a bit of a cliff edge here sticking outwards a little bit more. So we can just add a little bit of color on there, patch it, layer it on top of each other, of course. Make sure on the end there it's nice and brown. And I think that's all we're going to be able to get away with for highlights back there. So we'll jump straight to the highlight color at the bottom of the fourth column and repeat. Just add in some patchiness on top of some of these brown areas like so. Just very simple. And then we'll go to our darker tones, which is gonna be the majority of this area. So we'll grab the middle of the third column and we're gonna send the lines this way this time now. So we're gonna dash in some lines here and just keep going. Again, it's 55%, so it's fairly faint at this point. I'm just dashing in lines after line after line in exactly the same fashion we did the rest of it. So you might be able to see some of it now starting to layer on top of each other. Let's turn off our guide. We don't need that on at the minute. Patch in some lines and color making its way backwards. Nicely done. And let's go ahead and add in some color in there too. A couple of little patches in there. So once you've done your first coat, you can then go to your colors and grab the bottom color in the third column and repeat. We'll go ahead and dash in some lines on the top edge here. Little patches of the stone. Layer them on top of each other, of course, to see if you can create some cool sort of steep lines and patches in there. Something simple like that, and maybe a little line there just to vary up that landscape, and maybe just a couple of blobs in behind here, maybe a line or two streaking down, and then maybe even like a patch or two in that area there too. Keeping it somewhat simple, and again, we'll repeat with the line work. So we'll create another new layer. We can tap on it and clip it just to make sure it's nice and tidy. We can go to our colors and grab the top color here in the third column, and again, reduce that brush down to 1%, bring the opacity back up to 100, and let's start hacking away into here. So create some lines and groove work in here. And I want you to kind of keep this really simple though. Like you don't need to sort of add in too much detail. It's so far back. And also we're gonna add a sort of big hue of color on the top of it in a minute. So it's gonna get really kind of blended out because it's a little bit further back. It should be a little bit less detailed and a little bit less saturated. So I'm just gonna carve away into some of these areas here. You know, you can create little V shapes, little lines here and there. Just little sort of groove lines all making their way down and break down those stones and create all the little breakouts of the, the cliff edge. And you should just be able to keep, create something as simple as that, just very, very simple in the distance. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna add in a nice little wash of color on the top of this layer. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go to our layers, we're gonna go, tap on our far ground group that we created and once you're happy with it, tap on it and flatten it into one layer. We're gonna create a new layer gonna tap on it and we're gonna clipping mask it and we're gonna change the blend mode from normal. We'll change it to screen. We're gonna to go to our colors and grab this color here, the top of the sixth column. And our brush wants to be changed to the option of airbrushing in the soft brush. And if you give yourself a good enough size, maybe around about 20% just to cover this, press really, really lightly and just cover over the top of it, maybe once or twice or maybe even three times. Look at the difference about how much the color changes. It pushes it so far back now because 
as things get further away in the distance, they should start to lose a lot more saturation as well as contrast. So we've really faded that out and that will nicely settle into the rest of the design later. So I urge you to leave that layer if you can and maybe come back to it if you've got the layers available. Let's now go ahead and move on into the water. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer, tap on it and clip it to the water and swipe from left to right on both and group them together. And of course we'll rename this too and we'll call it water. We're gonna to go to the empty layer that's clipped we're going to go to our colors and we're going to add in some of the water tones. So we're going to grab this color here, the middle of the third column from the right. And we're going to go to our brush. We're going to use drawing, of course, and the black burn. I think I'm going to set the size to around about the 10% and we'll keep the opacity at 100. And we're going to streak in this color from the back to the front. So we're going to go along our canvas here, left to right. We're going to streak this in. And then as we get gradually closer for, towards us, especially back here, keep that nice and light back there and leave only a little bit of color in there. And then as you make your way even closer into this area, create some darker patches, but tip your pen on its side and try to create a lovely sort of blend of color in this area using the brush and trying to just patch in and leave some gaps and really streak it in this space. And we'll probably you know adjust it in a moment, but get over towards the cliff edges if you want. And then let's maybe make that brush size a bit bigger. I've gone up to 18% now, just to try and scrape over the top. Back here, I don't want there to be too many sort of areas back there. That can be a little bit sort of more uh, blocked in as such. But down here, we can have that lovely you know, patchiness to it. But don't be afraid to just block in, say, the right-hand side over here, and then let that kind of patchiness and sort of scraping aesthetic sort of sit over on the left-hand side. So you can patch over towards the right and just leave all this area here with some detail. And it kind of looks as if you've just literally chucked in a load of detail, which looks fantastic. What we will do though, is we'll grab our eraser, tap on the eraser and go to Blackburn, of course, set the brush to, let's go to about 5%, I think size wise. In behind these little rocks here, leaning off towards the left-hand side slightly, we're gonna add in a bit of a shadow around the base of that and just dash away a little bit. Let's not forget this little guy as well. And in the gaps here, like in these little gaps here, we just want to take away a little bit of the color just for a moment, like so. And then take a look back here as well. Can we sort of just break that down a little bit? Back here is going to be a little bit more shaded, of course. So we don't want to add in too much color in that space. We then want to go ahead and go to our layers and create another new layer. Tap on it and clipping mask it. Go to your colors. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move into a slightly more brighter tone. So we're going to grab this color here, the top right of the palette. It actually matches the sky. So we're going to grab this one here. I'm going to go to our brush and switch it though to airbrushing and the soft brush. I've got this brush I set to about 20% and we're going to add in a lovely little sort of gradient of color in the distance. So I just want to sort of blend this along our water and our ocean along that horizon line and just blend it down and just a, just somewhat just up to here. That's it really. In this space here can be a little bit brighter. Nothing back here. Again, we want that to be nice and dark. And then we've got to create another level of color back here so you can either do it on the same layer or you can go ahead and put it on a separate layer we're going to match up to the sky so we're going to grab this color here the top of the second column from the right and we're going to blend over the top of that as well along your horizon and try to create like a bit of a seamless sort of blending you want the very very subtle line here which is where you might need to go ahead and put that on a separate layer but that's totally dependent on how much pressure you add in your own work and for now, I'm gonna leave that as it is. We've got that lovely blend out into the distance. We're gonna go ahead though, and we're gonna add in a slightly brighter color to the right-hand side. We'll create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and we will tap on it and clipping mask it to the water and change the blend mode from normal to color dodge. We'll go to our colors. We'll go ahead and we will grab the middle color here in the third column from the right. And just over here on the right hand side, we're just going to sort of blend in soft airbrush still like a little bit of a, a lovely, more colorful, saturated tone just over here on the right hand side. It'll be very subtle at the back, but here in this area, you'll see this kind of color just really come into play a little bit more and brighten up the ocean. Then we need to go ahead and create another new layer. We're going to tap on it and clipping mask it. We're going to change the color to the darkest tone of the water, which is this one here, the bottom of the third column from the right. Bring that brush size down to about 7% and just behind this land here, I'm gonna probably bring that down in fact, down to about four or five, just behind this area of land here, 
just darken that up a little bit like this and kind of blend it down a tiny bit. So just adding in a bit of a shadow underneath that surface, reintroducing the base color. Likewise, we're gonna go ahead and just triple check over here. Can we just darken up on top of any of those little wave lines back there just to really darken that out a little bit more. So that should give that land just a little bit of a shadow underneath. But what of course will really make this sort of stand out a bit more is some nice sort of sure breaking of the lines. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We wanna go ahead and create a new layer above the land. So I'm gonna go above the land now and create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and grab the top color here in the third column from the right. Your brush wants to go back to drawing and black burn, opacity 55%. And you probably wanna set that maybe down to about sort of two to 5% potentially. And we're gonna draw in the little wave lines at the bottom here where the water is crashing onto our land. So. I'm going to bring the brush size down to 2% for this little fella down here and then just sort of scrape around them and then just create little sort of grooves off from there, little sort of dashes and breaks. Now you can sort of really outline the bottom of it if you want to completely, just adding in that little bit of white coverage there. We'll do the same along here as well. So around the base of this sort of bit that's sticking out, we'll go along the baseline here of the water and the cliff, how it's just sort of making its way down and then just adding some scrapes here and there. Now, of course, that color dodge, etc. earlier really brightened up this area over here. So you may wanna just press a few times here to really add in some bright patches of white because again, we're at 55%. So you can really build up that color if you want to. You know, in here, you can just scribble your pen a little bit and blend that along that line. And then because this area here is probably gonna be extremely stony in this area, you can go ahead and just sort of create more little sort of dashes and sort of just little areas of white here break up of the water where the cliffs are just breaking up the flow of the water in here and they're just crashing up against the cliff edge and maybe even a little bit here and there that just that little sort of effect here is just enough to kind of maybe show the water cracking up the top of it so i'm going around some of these areas and then just trying to dash in some color, tipping my pen slightly on its side, but also then occasionally pointing it quite downwards as well, squiggling it along these lines. And this really connects the water and the cliffs together in my opinion, because it just, it's that blend that you need between two colors that just sort of tidies up the edges a little bit and sort of makes it really seamless. Down here at the front, create some more white grooves down here, you know, as it hits the cliff that we're stood on potentially, you know. Maybe there's lots of rocks in the water that disrupts the water's flow. Add in some water down here, some more little dash lines here and there. Let's break up for the water. I think if you can spend a little bit of time on this as well, it will look really fantastic, really bring it all together. So just more and more little dashes, little dots almost as well. They don't have to be lines, they don't have to be long drags. You can just dash in there. Taking a look at your work, seeing what you're happy with. And then we need to also add some further back here as well, but we wanna bring that brush size down to a 1% brush size ideally, and really just squiggle your pen along those edges to create a similar effect. So back here, you're gonna end up creating the, the breakup of the water around this area of land. It should hopefully now make it a little bit more seamless as well into the water. And, what I recommend you do is you just go along the edge with sort of varying amounts of pressure and just see if you can add in like little scrape lines like this. And then in front of that, then create sort of additional lines and a little level of detail. So create that very simple look to it first. Over here on the right again, if the flow is coming in this way, can we just maybe add in some dashes and scrapes here and you know, maybe just a little bit in this area here between the channel of these two pieces of land little areas of detail. Scraping that along there, that looks pretty sweet. Looks like it's no longer floating just back there on the water and I'm trying to just scrape my pen along here, trying to create some, again, additional levels of detail around that base of the land. And I think that's quite convincing, that looks pretty sweet. You can really sort of add in a good solid amount of color there and overlap the edge of the land if you want to. It just looks pretty sweet, it looks nice and effective. Here I could maybe you know, add in some color in this little gap here maybe and separate those two a tiny bit more from one another. I'm gonna bring the brush size back up to around about that 2% mark. Seeing if I can just squiggle my pen in there and add in some more details. Really kind of layer it on top of each other. So I'm just building up the sort of white effect around the, 
the base of the cliffs here. So maybe it is quite a, a rough day down there today in the day that we're, we're painting this or drawing it or photographing it, whatever your reality of what you create is. I always imagine it that we're taking a photograph and we've taken a photograph, but we're building the photograph. So to me, we're taking a look at all the detail and seeing how it sort of came about, but we're, we're in control of building up that scene. Back here, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of the detail, but we're gonna probably just blend this out in a minute and take it down a few. So I'm just gonna sort of scrape around the edge of the cliff back here and then a few lines of details in this gap in a similar sort of fashion to the opposite side, but it's a little bit too bright for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my eraser, tap on the eraser and use something like airbrushing and the soft brush. And then just bring that brush size up to maybe around about five to 10% and just lightly with your pressure, just take away a little bit, just take away a little bit over the top. So I've kind of brought it down to like 50% there. Over here, you've got that light coming. So it's hitting the water, it's nice and bright, but over there it's nice and dark. And just before we finish the water, I wanna go ahead and go to my layers. I wanna open up the water group and go to the layers, create a new layer at the top and tap on it and clipping mask it. I wanna to go to my colors. I'm gonna grab the, we're gonna try and get away with a really dark color here. So I'm gonna grab this color here, the top of the uh, third column there, brush wants to be back to airbrushing and the soft brush. And let's bring the opacity down to 40% and let's bring the brush size down to about four. And just where this cliff makes its way down into the water, I just wanna sort of darken up around the base of the water here. So I've gone over it once and now twice, just trying to darken up back there, show that of course it's in the shade, it's nice and dark. But I still wanna have that little bit of blue. So the 40% that just helps take the edge off a little bit, but now we've got this wicked effect. So now we are done with the ocean. Feel free to, at this point, collapse your water down, tap on it, flatten it if you want to. It's totally up to you. Of course, if you're not saving your layers, you're all good. And just rename this layer as well. Let's rename that one and call it waves. So that was all the white lines that we created. We're now gonna move on to the main subject of our design, which of course is the house that's gonna sit on the top. So we're gonna bring back in our guide. We're gonna tap on our guide and invert it. So it's the darker variation so we can see the line work. And above our foreground, we're gonna go ahead and create two new layers. Swipe so from left to right on both and group them together. And we'll just rename this and we'll call it building. Now we're gonna to go to the bottom layer out of the two. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. I'm gonna grab this color here, the bottom of the sixth column. We're gonna make sure our brush is set back to the option of drawing and Blackburn. 100% opacity and the size wants to be fairly small because we're drawing in this shape here of our building. So we're gonna draw in this line here first, we're gonna draw in the roof and we're gonna bring this along. Now, I want you to remember, of course, we are very, very zoomed in. So all the detail that you add here and all the sort of minor little sort of areas where the brush moves around is fine. Now, I've dropped it down to the smallest size that it can go down to. I'm just gonna sort of bulk this in a little bit more and then there's a line that I need to create that goes along here and down here. Now again, we want that painting aesthetic, so don't stress if your lines aren't straight or they don't look particularly sort of, um, you know, fit the shape completely, it's perfectly fine. We just need to create these simple shapes to start with. We're gonna go ahead and create this little curve here at the top and then the other curve on the far side. You may need to adjust that shape ever so slightly. Mine's leaning a little bit, so I've just adjusted that slightly and maybe I'll get rid of a little bit of the curve here. And then we're gonna go along here. You don't wanna press too firm. You wanna keep your pressure nice and consistent and point your pen down if you can and drag your color into there. So we've now got the, the top area of that. And we've gotta create three basic shapes for the entire area of our design. So we're gonna go ahead then and we'll drag this layer to the top of the building group and we'll tap on the layer underneath and create a new layer. So we've got three in total in this group. The next layer down, we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here. It's the top of the fourth column from the right. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna create this shape here. Now I'm just gonna bring my uh, guide opacity down a little bit. I'm gonna bring it down to 25%. Making sure I'm on the layer here. Again, that second layer in this group, we're gonna create this layer here and the shape for it. So we're just gonna block that in, creating a straight line down we're gonna move over to this side here. Now we're doing the face area here of our sort of um, building here. So we're gonna come down here, come down this straight line here, blocking that shape in. And we're gonna go up towards the point at the very top. So I might have to point my pen down a little bit, block that in and bring the point down and then fill in the gap. 
We're going to go underneath our roof here. I'm going to come down towards this point and go all the way down towards the ground. But just like I said before, we want it to kind of sit in behind. So I'm going to go up to the edge and maybe ever so slightly in front of, but that's fine. And then go down this line here, creating the other side of the building and create another pivot point out. You can draw in a straight line if you wish and hold it and drag and drop the color in. So you've now created the face of the building. We can move over and start on this side over here. So we'll go down a layer again. We'll go to our colors and we'll go ahead and move into this color here. It's the top of the sixth column. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna block in this edge down here. So we're gonna draw it in. Again, you are right zoomed in with this brush. By the way, if you're struggling at this point, I may have already said it on screen, but if you're struggling at this point, use something like inking in the dry ink if you don't want to use the blackburn it can be a little bit more precise in these smaller more dainty areas so that's an alternative if you want to i'm going to keep though with drawing in the blackburn and then we're going to come down this edge here all the way down we're going to go down and meet the ground create that shadowed side of the building i'll connect that at the top here quickly so i can drag and drop the color into that space we've got a Keep this building going all the way along there, all the way along underneath our roof. I'm going to zoom in and just link these two together and drag and drop the color in. Now you may need to take a look when you zoom all the way out. Do you need to just tidy up this corner? I think I do. So I'm going to grab my eraser, making sure it's set to drawing and blackburn. This is optional, of course. I'm just going to tidy and make sure that those two just nicely touch each other and link up correctly. And now I've just erased that. I'm going to switch back to my brush. And I'm just going to add in this side over here of the spire on the front. So I'm going to just connect those together up towards the point at the top and then bring that down. We're just doing the shaded side there of the spire. Lovely stuff. And again, we want that painting aesthetic, don't we? So now we've got our building, we can now go ahead and start to work on some of the details for the building. So we're going to start with the layer we were just working on. We're going to create a new layer and tap on it and clipping mask it just in case we want to make any adjustments to the details. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color in the sixth column. We're going to go ahead then and we're going to just very lightly, probably with a 2% brush size, we're just going to go left to right here, just go down the building really lightly, tipping my pen on its side, trying to create a bit of a brickwork kind of effect. So down this sort of main column all the way towards the bottom. And you can see as I've got towards the bottom, I'm trying to leave it a little bit less detailed because we've got these archways, which you may or may not be able to see on our guide. I'll invert the guide again. So you can see those little curve lines here. So on the same layer, so making sure we're on that clip layer to the blue, I'm gonna bring the brush size down to 1%. And I'm just gonna sort of very lightly, in fact, let's go all the way smaller. Let's go all the way down to 1%. I'm gonna really lightly go over here and create like a bit of an archway here. And it doesn't need to be anything perfect. You can see there's gaps in the line. That's perfectly fine. We're just trying to give the illusion of some detail in the distance. Likewise, we'll go up here. We'll create these archways here like this. And again, they don't need to be perfect. They are brickwork in the distance. So they can be nice and sort of uh, broken and eroded, etc. Because they're miles away. They're right in the distance. Now, this one's a little bit smaller and I don't mind that. And then we'll do the same here. We'll go up here. And I'm trying to keep my pen as sort of straight as possible. I'm trying to draw in these lines for our arches on the side of this beautiful building in the distance. Zoom out. Again, look at the scale in which we're drawing. It's tiny. So we're going to zoom back in. We're going to go ahead and just lightly go in the gaps and very lightly with your pressure, just try and just layer on the top some stonework. Maybe even inside your archways here, can we go ahead and maybe sort of brighten up like one side maybe just try and brighten up the line here and then maybe some very light sort of scrapes on the inside can we go ahead and just scribble our pen in these gaps again zoom out make sure you don't get lost in those details in the gaps here just scraping across now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to sort of show that there's brickwork here by tipping our pen on its side and doing all these kind of effects i'll just very lightly do a couple of scrapes in there and then what we're going to go ahead and do is add in some shadows. Now we're going to go ahead and create a, another new layer here. So we're going to go ahead and go to our layers and create a new layer. Tap on it and clipping mask it. We're going to change the blend mode though from normal to the option of multiply at the very top. And we're going to use the same color as the building, but because it's set to multiply, it will be a slightly darker version. So we've got this color here, the top of the uh, sixth column there. 
we're going to go ahead and add in some shadow. So we're going to add in a shadow underneath here, underneath this top edge. It's a really subtle one. We're going to go ahead and add in a shadow underneath our main roof here. This will nicely separate it from the rest of the design and you can kind of bring that down a little bit if you want to. Really, really light with your pressure as long as you can just about get away with it. You can really separate the roof. And then what you can do is you can kind of darken up on the inside of some of these archways that we created to create some contrast and darker tones and darker areas. So I'm just creating some scrapes in there. I'll create more of a darker line on the right hand side, but then occasionally a couple more scrapes on the inside as well. Darker line on here. And then a couple of scrapes on the inside as well. Zooming out, don't get lost in them details. Let's go all the way back out. And then maybe just on the outside of some of these arches, you can just create like a bit of a darker line on the left edge of some of those archways. So just a little bit of a darker tone there. And hopefully that should just help them nicely stand out a little bit when you zoom all the way out, all the way back here. Now for me, if I take a look at my line work here and I take a look at the layer below it, the highlights that we create, they're a little bit too over detailed for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eraser. I'm gonna bring the eraser of the same brush a little bit lower, but I'm gonna erase into some of these and create a bit of separation between these areas of my uh, archways. For me, the line work of my arches, we're just getting a little bit lost. So I'm just gonna sort of break them down a little bit, take away a little bit of the color. I'll take a little bit of the color away from here too just to break that down. So again, you can always zoom all the way back out, take a look at your design and see if there's any sort of things you'd like to rectify. And for me as well, the stonework is a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this layer. I'm gonna bring the opacity down a bit. I'm gonna bring it all the way down to around about sort of 60%. That way I can now see that a little bit of detail, but nothing too strong. The shadows should be the most important parts there. We're then gonna work on the front of the building. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the layer there. If you want to, you can pinch those three together for the left side but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer in front of it. I'm gonna tap on it and clipping mask it to the brighter side. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here. It is the middle of the fourth column from the right. Same brush as we've been using, of course, the Blackburn. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in some of the details here. So I'm gonna to go to my guide. Again, I'm gonna tap on it and invert it because we'll, we'll jump in between shadowed areas and light areas. So again, going back to the layer that's clipped to the light side over here, we're gonna create a very simple archway now. At this particular point, I'm actually going to go to inking and the dry ink and bring that brush size down to something really small. So I've gone to inking, dry ink. What size have we got here? We're down to a 1%. That should give me enough sort of detail here where I can draw in this kind of massive archway here with a good amount of sort of detail and crispiness to my lines. And then I'll jump back to the other brush, but I just want to make sure that something like this that's in the light gets a good amount of detail. I'm gonna to jump to a 3% brush size and just kind of leave a gap around that shape and then create a bit of a shaded side over here and kind of just scrape down there. So leaving like this stone-like shape on the front and then I can darken up on the inside here as well. I'll do the same for the windows as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go down here and I'll bring the brush size down to a 1% so I can get the crispiness of these shapes in. So I've got the windows here and they're just very simple shapes. They're like little houses, little houses shapes. Up into a point, up into a point. Again, we're working with pixels at this point. We are so zoomed in, so you don't need to stress over these ones too much. I'm gonna make that one a little bit shorter than the, uh, the guide, just so I can block that in. And then again, I'm just gonna go round, leaving a little bit of a gap and just sort of shade this in. I just want to crisp these details in quickly while I've got the opportunity to be this close into my work. I'm going to darken up the inside here of these windows as well. So just darkening them up in there. Let me zoom out. Awesome, we've got the structure of them, that's wicked. We'll jump back though to our brush that we were working with. So we'll go back to drawing and the black burn. Bring the brush size down to 50, opacity, sorry, down to 55% and we'll set the brush size to about 2%. And now we can go ahead and do a couple of those things that we did before. So we'll go ahead and go underneath. I'm gonna bring that brush size down to 1%. I'm gonna go underneath our roof, giving that a little bit of a shadow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go left to right in some of these areas here, pressing where I can a little bit firmer just to try and add in some brickwork in here and just a little bit behind the gate or the big doorway that this has here. 
I'm going to just add in a bit more of a shadow in there. I'm going to add in a shadow here just along the edge of the, the sort of pivot between the two sides. And I want to add in some nice randomness and patchiness in here to some of these areas. Definitely want to add in some random patchiness down the sort of spire at the top. So just random patchiness in there. Just add in hopefully some erosion and brickwork almost on there. We'll go down this edge here, darkening that up a tiny bit. And likewise, darkening up here. And that should also give you a little bit more contrast against the background to help this all stand out a little bit more. A couple of little random scrapes here. Look how big the brush gets, but we're just adding in the tiniest amount with some really, really delicate pressure. And then we're going to bring that as small as it can go and then go in here, darken up the inside of some of these windows here. And give that a good solid amount of color. Darkening up in there. And then a little bit more of a shadow just behind it along that line that we created with the dry ink. So we're just going along those lines, darkening up in here, really kind of painting these in. A little bit of a ledge maybe at the bottom, a little patch there of color. Again, look at the distance, it's crazy. So far in on our design, let's just darken up the inside of the main big sort of dominant door here in the detail of it and create some sort of lines here, some vertical lines to give the sort of impression that there's some sort of detail, but we don't want to detail it necessarily. And darkening up in here, really got to sort of patch in these shadows where possible. A little bit more of a shadow beyond the left hand side of the gate. Zoom all the way out, just triple check you've got that kind of aesthetic. Those shadows I just created probably can be toned down a little bit. And I'm just going to shadow at the bottom a tiny bit more too. And I really want to get like a good scraping of colour in here just to add in some variation to the stone of this building. Like it's not a perfectly sort of plastered building. It's got lots of stone hanging out of it. Lots of little grooves here and there. And lots of little stonework. Zoom all the way out. See if you can get that level of detail on there. But of course, don't be afraid to also go back in with your eraser. And bring that brush size all the way down and just define areas and maybe draw some lines in here. Go in there with your um, the dry ink brush that we used. Draw in some lines here separate some of these areas. I'm just drawing in some horizontal lines in those dark shadows that I created to kind of give the stonework effect. So just drawing in some horizontal lines here and there, breaking that down. I'm going to go back to my brush and just give the windows a very, very light gray coat here. I want them to be quite dark in there because they obviously indent into the building. And zoom in all the way out, that's all I want to do for that. I don't want to add in any more to that. That's fairly detailed for such a far distant object. Now, the only thing we need to do is just add in a little bit of color on the roof. Again, you can pinch the details that we just did on the face of the building to it if you wish. By the way, while we're on it, the same layer we were on, we can add in some stonework back here as well. Just some scrapes up and down there too, just to add in that same level of characteristic. Let's go ahead then and go to the roof. We can go ahead and tap on a new layer, tap on it and clip it. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab this color here. It's the bottom of the fourth column from the right. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to separate the two sides of this sort of spire at the top here. And you'll be able to see that on your drawing guide. If you've got it turned up, you'll be able to see that this side over here is slightly separated. And then again, a couple of little sort of scrape lines here and there, just making their way across to add in some little area of the tiles maybe catching the light. Wicked stuff. Let's zoom in again and let's go ahead and just create some horizontal lines across our roof. Just a few of them constantly going left to right. You can brighten it up towards the top edge, especially where that light's catching. A little bit along here. And then can we factor in a shadow maybe of our spire here? I think we can. So let's grab our eraser. Same brush, but just maybe just draw in a line that kind of follows off from that peak at the top there. So you're kind of just drawing in a diagonal line. Hopefully when you cut through there, it should then give you a little bit of an impression of a shadow. The next step is to add in a quick tree at the front. Now, if you're done with your building, you can tap on it and you can flatten it. I'm going to create a new layer in front and another one and swipe from left to right on both and group them together. And we'll rename this, we'll call it tree. And we're going to go to the empty layer at the bottom. We'll go ahead and go to our colors. We need a dark green. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to create one. So we're going to go ahead and grab this color here. I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. And for you, the value is this one here, 213D1F. 
and we're going to draw in a tree. So we're going to go ahead and bring the opacity of the brush up to 100%, bring the size down to a very small size, and you should just about be able to see on your guide here an outline almost of a tree shape. So let's go ahead and switch our brush quickly to inking and the dry ink. And we're going to draw in sort of the main trunk here. So I'm going up to 2 or 3% brush size here. Just want to draw in like a bit of a, a trunk here and like a couple of break-offs of some branches some sort of bushy kind of tree shape here at the front. So something simple like this. We'll then go ahead and go to the layer above. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab this color here, the top of the second column, and your brush wants to be set to the option of drawing and the black burn. We'll go ahead and set the 2% brush size, and we can go ahead and create a bit of a, a fluffy, patchy tree shape here at the front. Leave gaps in there if you can, like a little sort of patch in there that's empty will look fantastic. It's like the breakthrough that you can see on the opposite side. And there's a couple of very light little sort of dashes here and there of the green on the edges will just give you like a bit of a rough edge to it. And just give you a little bit more like a tree shape and silhouette to it. Lovely stuff. And then on the same layer, we'll go ahead and we'll tap on it and we will alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of what we've already painted. We'll go to our colors and we'll grab the next color down. So it is the middle of the second column. We'll zoom in and then you just need to take a look at all the bunches that you've created for your tree. And can you just squiggle your pen along some of those bunches of the tree and just create kind of a similar style to the, the clouds almost. You're just creating a little bit of a highlight on some of those rounded shapes that you can maybe identify. Zoom all the way out. Let's not get lost again in those details. Let's go to our colors though and grab the bottom color in the second column and then just patch in some even brighter tones in here dashing your pen away scraping along the top edges trying to just add in a little bit of a brighter aesthetic to the right hand side and the only thing we need to do is introduce a shadow so i think we'll do it on the same layer as our sort of main trunk here we'll go to our colors and grab the top color here in the second column and just behind our little tree here, we're just going to go ahead and create like a bit of a shadow and then just scrape in like a bit of a patch here, a bit of a bigger patch. It matches up to the base color of the land. So zooming out, you can create like a really patchy shadow effect just coming off of the tree there onto that side. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to pinch our tree all together onto one layer. We can swipe it to the left and duplicate it and we can grab our cursor and we can move it. We'll move another version of it all the way down to here. Now that looks, of course, like we've duplicated it. So let's go ahead and zoom in. We'll grab our eraser. We'll just go ahead and just break down the edge of the tree here. So maybe we'll just really get rid of all of this shape over here. Break down the shape. We're going to make a much skinnier version down here. And let's break down the shadow as well, just a tiny bit along here to create a slightly different looking tree. So then we can just add in some more detail. Now taking a look at that, I'm really happy with how the designs come together. We've got this wicked painting aesthetic to it all and it all looks fantastic. But we can go ahead and add in a lot more effects to this to really sort of add in that canvasy kind of painting aesthetic and build up some different effects on top, such as a border as well. And the borders are always my favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my layers. I'm gonna collapse the tree groups down and create a new layer at the top. We'll go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and create another new color. So we're going to go ahead and go to this color here in the top of the second column from the right. We'll go to our disk. I'm just going to move that a little bit closer towards white. And if I go to the value tab here and you'll just need to type in this hexadecimal code, it is F8 F3 E8. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our brush. We're going to change it to artistic and the old beach. I'm going to keep that brush size at a nice 56 percent here. I'm going to go along the edge of our canvas all the way down this edge. So it just stuttered there for a moment. So I'm going to go down here, mask in this kind of cool effect on the edges go all the way along. You want to start off with some nice solid white lines to start with. So a couple of nice solid lines on our canvas. You can hear my voice going. So once we get all the way around all the edges, we can then go ahead and just lightly go along some of them with some really, really light pressure and just kind of allow some erosion almost. Maybe where the masking didn't quite work out too perfectly, you can create these lovely little effects with some really light pressure. Feel free to bring the brush size down if it's a little bit too large for you. But a little sort of masking effect down here, just age the painting as well a little bit more as well. And should give you a really nice looking effect all the way around. 
Now for me, we can go ahead and add in some of the canvas texture as well. So we can go ahead and go tap on our tree group. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna to go to the disc and double tap at the bottom of it to select black. We're gonna to go to our brush. Now for you, it will be under imported right at the very bottom. For me, it's part of my original Halloween set, but it's a canvas texture brush. I'm gonna set the brush size to 100% and you're just gonna to need to cover your entire canvas up and down with a light covering of the canvas texture. Then what you need to go ahead and do is change the blend mode of this one to the option of overlay. We're then gonna go ahead and swipe this one to the left and duplicate it. Tap on it and invert it. So it now flips it to white. They cancel each other out at the minute, but if we tap on here and we change the blend mode to the option of soft light, and then we grab our cursor. If you tap at the top here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 times and tap on your cursor when you're done. You should have now revealed this texture effect. So every time I tapped at the top, I nudged it a pixel up to the top. So that now gives us this wicked canvas texture that runs all the way over your design. Now, if you need to, you might wanna go ahead and swipe, say your overlay layer to the left and duplicate it, and then bring the top one down to maybe 50% or just have a play with the contrast and how much texture it's added in because potentially you might not have added enough in some of these areas. I've got a nice subtle amount to mine. I don't want to add in too much. And likewise, you can always duplicate the soft light as well if you want to add in some you know, whiter tones as well in here. So I've just duplicated that fully and just left it as a duplicated layer here. So I've got a full soft light twice. I've got two overlay layers of the darker tone, but one is set to 50%. And I can group them together by swiping from left to right and group them. Now that's optional if you want to add in that texture. One final effect though I want you to do is if we turn off our texture for a minute, we go ahead and we turn off our border as well. We'll tap on our tree group here and we'll create a new layer. We'll turn off our guide at the top. We'll go ahead and tap away and we'll swipe down with three fingers. We'll go to the option of copy all. We'll swipe down with three fingers again and go to the option of paste. It will paste in a whole new layer here with your design all on it. We're gonna go ahead and tap on the layer. I'm gonna change it to the option of add. We're gonna bring the opacity down there. We'll bring it down to something like 35%. We can have a play with that later on. And then we're gonna hide it. We're gonna tap on this layer. We're gonna go ahead and add a mask. A mask is typically white, so it's showing everything, but we're gonna tap on this layer and invert the mask to black. So it's now hidden it completely. So now what we can go ahead and do is we can reveal little parts that we wanna show in our design using the mask. So if we're making sure we're on the mask and our color is set to white, our brush is set to the option of our brush that we've been using throughout the whole of this. We go to the option of drawing and Blackburn. We'll go to, we'll probably bring the opacity down to the 55 so we can sort of play with it. And we've got a about a 6%, four or five, 6% brush size here. We're gonna zoom in. And for example, now if I just, just dash away a little bit on here, I can start to reveal the add layer. So I'm bringing in some additional brighter tones. So if I was to, for example, go back to here and I tap on the layer, bring the add up a little bit more, maybe up to about 60%, I can really see that change in the color. So let's try 60% for a minute and making sure we're on the mask still. You can add in some brighter tones on the side of the tree there. We can go ahead and if I set the brush size to something nice and large, about 10%, you could add in some additional lighting here on this surface of the grass. Now I went a little bit astray there of the uh, actual shape, so that's why I undid that one. But I'm gonna go ahead and brighten up a little bit more on the grass there. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in a little bit more up the top here. Again, we can just patch in some areas of brighter tone there. You can take a look at your building. Can you bring your brush size all the way down to like a a small 1% and bring the opacity back up to 100% and maybe like brighten up a little bit here and a little bit on the inside of the windows, a little bit on the inside of the door maybe, and maybe the odd little patch here in there of the building. Zoom all the way out though, don't try to sort of guesstimate if you've done it right or not. Add in a little bit of brighter tone maybe on the top of this roof up here. Maybe a little bit on top of this area of the roof as well, like a little bit along this bright edge here. I'm taking a bit of an artistic liberty at this point, just trying to add in some fun little effects here and there where I want to add them in. Here at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and create blades of grass here. Some really purposeful blades. I can brighten up certain areas. I can be very particular with where I put them. I can create some lovely blades in here. Increase the brush size back up again. Just some that are sticking out a little bit more, a little bit more punchy, a little bit more colorful. 
You can brighten up the edge of the grass if you want to with some more dashes and scrapes. Lovely stuff. What else could we go ahead and do? Well, taking a look at our design, we can maybe go ahead and add in some brighter tones on some of these rocks. Maybe this little fella over here, a little bit on this edge too, and just a tiny bit in the areas that are most getting kissed by the sun. You know, you don't want to add them absolutely everywhere, but if you can add in like little areas of additional color here and there, you should be able to create some really fun effects. And taking a look at my design, I think I'm happy with that. The only addition here I would change is I just want to go ahead and add in some on the cloud. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to 55%. The size is set to 10. I'm going to undo those ones and I'm just going to lightly just create some brighter spots. I can layer it on top because it's set to 55% of course. And I can create some, some areas a little bit brighter. So just a few dashes along there. Bit of a brighter spot maybe over here again where that sun's probably over there. A couple of little scrapes here and there, little, little dashes. Just a little bit of extra fun here and there for your design. So if we go ahead and we go right up to the top, we bring back in our border, we bring back in our texture, and we go ahead and go up to our drawing guide and we turn it off. If we pinch with two fingers and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's painting. As always, make sure to tag me any finished creations over on Instagram when you're done. And of course, come and join the Discord as well for you to come and share your work with the rest of the Procreate community that we've got over there. As always, a massive shout out to my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. If you want to get your name featured in videos, but most importantly, get access to a catalogue of nearly 100 exclusive tutorials at the time of recording, have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access and much, much more, come and show your support for the channel over on my Patreon. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.